number 43, ladies and gentlemen. Right here we do have an equation. It's equal to zero, so they are asking us to solve, to get the actual answers. So the, the original equation's up here, and I already kind of started the work here, but let's pretend that you don't see all this work. Let's just look at this up here, the original equation. Now, it kind of, it's a trinomial, one, two, three, and it kind of looks like a quadratic equation, right? Like x squared, something x, and a number at the end. Now, I mean, think about it. Right here, it actually looks like a quadratic. So what I'm going to do right here is kind of like force, force it to look like a quadratic. If I wanted it to look like something squared, what would belong inside of the parentheses right there? If I wanted the x to the fourth to look like something squared, x squared is x squared. But if I wanted this x, whoa, I kind of moved it, gave it away. If I wanted this x to the fourth to look like something squared, what squared is x to the fourth? x squared is x to the fourth. Make sense? And then this other x squared is just an x squared in the parentheses. So it's kind of like I make it look like a quadratic trinomial. And then I continue factoring. Now, some people get confused by making it look like this. You don't have to make it look like that. So let's just ignore that. It's just the understanding of why I'm able to jump to this right here. Now, this is an x to the fourth. So x times x doesn't cut it. What does this have to be and what does that have to be? x squared and x squared. And then you could go about your uh, factoring the way you normally do. And how do we do that? We say what times what is a C value that if you add together is a B value. So what times what is negative 10 that if I add together is negative 3? Okay, if you guys are totally confused, just write down what times what is negative 10. You got negative 1 times 10. You have a negative 2 times 5. And that's about it. Which pair of numbers will combine together to give you a, the uh, negative 3? The negative 2 and 5 give you a positive 3 if you combine it but you know it needs to be a negative three, so you have the right numbers, just the wrong signs. So change the signs, and the two numbers will be a positive two in there and a negative five in there. Does that make sense? Okay, so we have factored. Now, why the heck do we want to factor? We want to factor just to be able to uh, split it and solve, because it is equal to zero, so if you have something times something equals zero, we're going to use the zero product property to split them. x squared plus 2 equals zero. x squared minus 5 equals zero. That's with the zero product property. And now we solve the way we'd, we would normally solve. On the left equation, you subtract 2, subtract 2. You're going to have x squared, x squared equals negative 2. And let me move this up. And if we continue solving this uh, equation right here, you're going to apply a square root on both sides. So you're actually going to get x to get rid of the square root. To get rid of the square, you square root both sides. And when you apply a square root, you have to put a plus minus in front of your answer. And you get the square root of negative 2. Now we know that the square root of any negative number ends up being an i. So you really have x equals plus or minus i square root of positive 2. And the square to positive 2, you cannot simplify it. So here is, here are two answers to our original equation. Let's do the other one. We're going to add 5 and add 5. So we're going to end up with x squared equals 5. And of course, we're going to apply a square root on both sides. So you're going to get x equals plus or minus the square root of 5. And that's another two answers right there. So we really have a total of four answers. Uh, two of them our real answers, the square root of 5, which is an actual decimal number, right? It's a crazy decimal, but nevertheless, it's still a decimal. It's about 2.1, 2.2. And the other two answers are imaginary answers. So technically, I know that uh, this equation, if it were a function and if I were to graph it, it would cross at two places on the x. The x-intercept values would be about 2.1. Positive 2.1 and negative 2.1, based off of the square root of 5. Now, these guys are imaginary, so it only crosses twice. Um, so this uh, equation has four answers, two imaginary, two real, 
And we already knew that it has four answers because the degree is four. So, well, at least we'll know that that's a maximum amount of answers. Let's move on.